All right, now it's time for the infamous Emmett Tweeter ribbon replacement. And to do that, you only need a couple small things. One is a good Phillips head screwdriver. You don't want to mar up your screws here. They actually show on the face, so you don't want to do that. You're going to need a little alcohol and a paper towel and, of course, the ribbon itself. Now, the way you start one of these guys is is you take these four screws out. These four screws actually are only threaded through this plate on the back. The plate as you can see is very thin. So what we're going to do is we're going to back our screws out but we're not going to take them out. Yep. And that is the exact reason why we're going to do that that way is because there are opposing magnets on both sides, which we'll see in a second here. But to keep everything aligned down here where it's fragile, the ribbon, you pull this plate up. Of course, we do have a piece of the cotton here, which we're going to get to this in a second also. We're going to stick you back in there for now so you don't get lost. Then we're going to set you aside. The next thing you're going to find, like I said, we've still got our screws in, is you're going to find this plastic separation block. And don't be surprised if your ribbon and everything else just kind of lifts off with it, like this one has. Now under this block, yeah, this one's a little stuck there. Under this block you will actually find the ribbon itself. You take that off and under it you're going to find another spacer and all the way down here you're going to find a clear really thin spacer I don't even know if this is going to show up on camera but it's clear and it's really thin you don't want to lose these guys Okay, and now we're going to set that aside. The next step is, is to take a little of this alcohol here. First thing we're going to do is remove the cotton between these three magnets here and leave this aside. I'm going to bring this guy over here. We're going to take a little bit of our alcohol here on a paper towel and we're going to clean the magnets. Now, it sounds a little, little weird to do that, but you've got to understand, these are actually exposed right on through. There's nothing protecting the diaphragm, the magnets, or anything else for that matter in here from getting smoke and soot and everything else. I mean, these are speakers from the 80s. I mean, they've been around a long time. Just from cooking and everything else, you know, and whatever smoke happens to be coming around, you can actually pick up that material on the magnets themselves. Now what I like to do is I'll clean the inside and then push off towards the ends of this one, especially the faceplate one I mean, because on these magnets there's a coating and I believe it's probably a stick-on type coating in which case you don't want to like peel it back so I always try to push towards the outside so you're not pulling on the edges and as you can see it's not uh, not perfectly clean <laughs> so that's a good thing to do because you don't want any residue on these because if you do have residue the actual diaphragm will stick to the magnets in which case it will cause it to heat up and burn up, basically. So we're going to give this another wipe down this way. Now after that, I like to wipe down everything else also. Just to prevent anything from sticking to anything. Okay, the first thing we want to do when we assemble it is make sure we know which side is up. Now, of course, that is the bottom of the tweeter. 
and it all affects on how you're going to build it. So our faceplate is in and we have our screws in place. We now already have inserted the cotton strips and what I like to do is just take a little piece of wire and push them down a little bit while holding the ends. Not like stuff them down there but just push them down just slightly below the magnet face. And the reason I like to do that is, is because if you look on the back of this one it may be hard to tell but you can see some scorching marks and that's exactly where those two pieces of cotton actually sit. Now I've noticed on other ones before that if the cotton actually doesn't make contact it doesn't tend to scorch it. And overheating can be the death of these guys so we try to avoid that by pushing the cotton down so it's not flush with the face. But not too much because you're trying to prevent air from moving around in there. That's what they're for. So we've got our face plate in place next thing we're going to do is we're going to find our clear shim I basically what it is and again this will be the bottom for you all so everything short goes on the bottom this has got a shorter piece than this end uh, here it's a little easier to explain with this see how much wider this piece is to this piece that means that is the bottom and the reason for that is is because these tabs on the bottom of the diaphragm here have to stick out beyond the actual case beyond the actual magnet case so we're going to take our clear and we're going to put you in first all the way down make sure it sits down and then comes the brown it's like a Bakelite piece but I guess it's plastic it goes in next and that actually brings the diaphragm up then the next thing is is the actual new diaphragm and of course the lugs for the speaker wires actually go up then it's our block again with the small end going down which sandwiches the actual diaphragm and then again small side down you put this guy in and that will prevent it from shifting back and forth all these screws are in place because the magnet will want to try to lock into itself and it's actually going to be opposing fields when you make it straight up and down so you slide that in and give it a push now with the two sandwiched between your fingers what you're going to need to do is flip it over and and try not to put too much pressure on the grill all you want to do is get one of these screws started and then start the other one then go around and start the next one and then start the next one because you don't want to keep pushing on this grill. These magnets on this side of the grill are actually two separate magnets just because a lot of people push on that at and it ends up breaking them and they'd prefer to actually break on a perfect line. So as you can see we now we have all of our screws in but they're not tight and what I want to do is I just want to look over everything and make sure it's all lined up and nothing's like sticking out wrong or anything like that. And then we just go ahead another half twist on this one another half twist on that one it's kinda of like tightening up a car tire you do want to go around so nothing kinda of like squeak you know cocks because everything is so super tight that it will actually lock cocked and you'll think it's tight and the reality is it's not now you'll feel it when it actually when everything kinda of like sandwiches and it you know there's really no place more for it to go and then you're just gonna give it like just a kinda of eighth to a quarter turn you know, you just want it snug. You don't want it actually denting the face plate. But you do want it tight. And the easy way to tell is, is you'll be able to see that the screws just barely protrude above the actual rear backer plate. And there you have an Emmett Tweeter ribbon replacement.
it's time to go install it. All right, and one other thing we're going to do is we're going to pull this 30 amp fuse, which a little large, and we're going to put in this 1.5 amp fuse. We were just giving our speakers a test run here, and we just ran across an issue that may come up for you all, so we thought it would give it a look over here. And when we were driving our speakers here, we couldn't get the tweeters to work. And after all the work we've done with new diaphragms, everything else, it was a little upsetting. So we got out our multimeter over here, and we started testing, and I... We took the tweeter out of this speaker and I put it in the other speaker and all that good stuff and you know everything worked 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 except for when you put it all together in this one and it didn't work and I was fooling around over here thinking maybe the pot was bad or something so I was just kind of giving a little tweak here and there and I grabbed or I pushed on the side of the fuse and it came on and come to find out this rivet is not making contact at times so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna solder mine up to make sure they always make contact but if you have an intermediate tweeter that's giving you a hassle and you can't figure out what's going on you may want to check on your fuse first maybe the fuse itself is not making contact you know the just give it a twist maybe clean the the, the ends off with a little emery cloth or something or uh, like in my case here it's actually this fitting right here. It's actually I can move it back and forth. So I'm going to go ahead and solder this one up and make sure it's right. All right, we finished it off with a good cleaning. Use this Orange Glow 2-in-1 cleaner. We like that. It tends to uh, clean real well and not leave a heavy polishy kind of residue. Makes them kind of that satin finish that they're actually supposed to be. We also use a real heavy terry cloth rag and we get it as hot as we can under sink water while we're doing it it also helps I think it opens up the pores in the wood a little bit and uh, helps it get all the dirt and grime out of them but not an endorsement but as you can see we are in great shape we'd love you to hear some music on them because we've already got the other ones hooked up and they sound awesome but due to copyright infringements, and you'll only be able to tell what's coming out of your speakers anyway, so it's kind of irrelevant, but they sound freaking awesome. And well worth the time invested in them. Now that the speaker's done, the last thing is to replace the grills. Looks like a cat's been on this one before. Alright, what we have here is our two speaker grills. I've already gone and done this one last night. They aren't as easy as they look being as long as they are and everything that has to be done prior to that. But it did turn out quite nice. And I'm going to give you a couple tiny tips on how to make them come out this way. I do like the color of the originals but it does kind of date them a little bit. So a while back I decided to go with this black here and it kind of updates them and makes them look a little more modern. Do get yourself some speaker grill material. Uh, it's nothing like fabrics that you will find in a fabric shop so if you're thinking you're going to customize your speakers with a fabric you may be doing more harm to them than good and for that matter Infinity even recommends that you take the grills covers off before you listen to them. First thing I'm going to need to do is I have to pull all these staples out all the way around the edge and then peel the material off. Now to get these staples out I personally use this what we call a hawk bill in the carpet world and it works real well when it's kind of stiff but I have been known to take an old you know uh, steak knife here and you're going to find that you're going to end up prying up one end most times. Then you just grab them with a the needle nose pliers and roll it out. That way you don't leave the piece 
nothing is more of a pain than a piece of staple sticking out every time you grab this, the grill and stab yourself in the finger with. And of course, we do want to remove our insignia. And we're just going to give it a quick scrape over to make sure nothing is stuck to it or we didn't miss any staples. We've taken our cleaned up frame and we have put it on top of our grill material and we've gone ahead and trimmed down the sides and on a cautionary note be very careful about which way you run. We made sure that the same side and the same you know top or bottom is exactly like the second speaker we just did. The reason we do that is on some occasions you will find that you put your material down like this and you put your frame on top thinking okay the front's just like the back and then you'll flip it over and in this case it really is but some cases you will find that when you flip it over the front and back don't match. There's also another issue. Now the other material will not do this but this face foam will, will show an example of what I'm talking about. Some materials have what they call a flow pattern. Like this here we use for the front of the speakers. If you take your finger and go up, you see it. If you take your finger and go down, it disappears. That's what we're calling a flow pattern. And if you take some of this grill material, not all of it again, but some of it, and you reverse it and change your, your faces from one way to the other way and you have one going up and one going down you may find that they do this looking side by side now you wouldn't notice it across the room but if you have a couple of them sitting side by side you would definitely notice the difference so be very cautious about which way you actually lay your material out and with it out it's time to show you all a stretch pattern. So to do a stretch pattern, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of glue and we're going to put it about three inches this way and three inches this way. Then we will take this side and fold it over nice and taut for, and staple it for about the three inches. Then we'll come over this side and we'll pull this nice and tight and then we'll staple it for the three inches and what we're trying to create here is a stretch across here so when we fold this one over and just nice and taut nothing you know no stretch on it and put it on it basically will be stretched across so it won't want to pucker along here from there you go to the far end and you pull it that way nice and tight fold it over do from this point to this point leaving the corners because they take extra care you don't want to have to fool with them right now and again you're just gonna set it what we call setting it and it's basically you just kinda want to pull it over no wrinkles pull it over and just finish tacking from this end here actually from the end you started at because you already have these three you don't want to pucker something up down here and you'll take this end and you'll go all the way up and attach it just taut nothing you know don't give it any stretch then you come over to this side and you stretch it starting from down here where you already started when you set the bottom and you stretch it all the way up this side and that's just giving it a nice pull this stuff is extremely user friendly. It's really stretchable. Um, you can actually overstretch it to a point. You don't want to do that because it'll cause the actual frame to bow and then it won't want to sit on the pins that it's actually in the speaker itself. And it'll either want to bow off the top and leave the top gapped open in the bottom or it'll bow in the middle in which case then it really doesn't even want to stay on the speaker. And that's a stretch pattern. I'm going to go ahead and get started should take you about a half hour or so per speaker cover and uh, you'll have brand new fronts.
All right, now on the corners, what you want to do is you want to take your material, and of course you want to add tension to this corner also, because you've pulled them in both ways now. There is going to be a little pucker down here, so you need to do is you grab your corner, and you give it a pinch, and you pull it up some. Then what I like to do is like take my finger across it like a hair cutter would, and just clip that off. Now, of course, I don't do it like a hair cuttery person because I was a carpet installer for a bunch of years, and if I did that, I probably wouldn't have fingers right now. But that's about the general idea. You want to just clip that right off. And the reason you want to leave that long is because this material is so thin that when you pull it over the top, it'll actually twist over and leave a gap. So, what the first thing I want to do get my trusty glue here and because the whole thing is going to be a seam we're going to put our glue all the way to the end and all around now what we'll do is we're going to take this piece and we're going to fold it over like so tighten it up give it a staple all the way down, so we'll get a couple taps now the reason you do like I said before the added piece is because you're gonna tuck it under and being as thin as this material is you'll never see it and then you're just gonna kinda roll this piece over as you go so it's got a rolled over edge and it's not an exposed raw edge and then you're also going to give it a pull. And from there, we'll give it a shot. Now also what I like to do is while it's apart, is I'll take a little glue because we now have the new piece down here. It doesn't have any glue on it. It's got glue underneath of it. And I'll take a little bit of this glue here, just along that edge. So when I do roll it over, instead of just the whole staple holding it, it'll be this glued edge will be glued all the way down. And like with the sides, it won't want to pucker in this area over time. And that there is how you make a corner. Of course it needs to be trimmed, but you know, you get the idea. Yeah, they look pretty darn good. And with that, we have the completion of all four speakers. Okay, I've gone from this contraption to this beauty. It's an AC Infinity. Nothing to do with Infinity speakers, but it's a cooling unit. It actually has fans in the bottom of it, and you can have different selections on whether you want it to exhaust out the top or the back. In my case, because of this enclosed cabinet here, I wanted it to exhaust out the front because I tend to just leave my doors open just a little bit so the air can actually circulate up through. And if you've got a stereo system and it's pumping out some heat, Man, you can't beat this. I mean, it's like 75 bucks. I mean, it's, it's just that cheap. I couldn't even build another homemade system and make it work for about the same money. And look at the packaging and the selected. You can't hear it over the stereo, of course. I can't play any music right now because I don't need to be copyright infringed. But, but yeah, that's a nice nice system. I'm not going to go into like immense detail about it. A lot of people have already done unboxings on YouTube already of these guys and I actually watch them so I would suggest you go watch them too and see how it works. It's a it's a really nifty unit.